Hey everyone, this is Kevin. We're going to get started here in just one quick moment. We're going to do a quick sound check. Okay, we're going to get started here in just one quick moment. We're going to give a little bit longer for some more people to join, and we'll get started here in just one quick moment. All right, I think that's pretty good. We're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, hello again. Um, my name is Kevin Gilmore from the National Weather Service New Orleans Baton Rouge office located in Salida, Louisiana. Um, we got a lot to talk about here about the latest with uh, Zeta. Now a tropical storm from last time when we talked uh, yesterday around this exact time we were seeing we have a hurricane that was making landfall across the Yucatan and now it has made landfall and has weakened a little bit with the land interaction. It's now a tropical storm with maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour. Um, we're uh, seeing the storm. Uh, it's going to start to reorganize here. I'm going to show you a satellite image here in just a quick moment. We're going to run down each specific threat. I know we have a lot of questions that are going to be coming across about each specific area. We're going to try and address that. We're going to talk about timing. We know that's a big deal too about when uh, will your location see the worst impacts. We're going to talk about that as well. Each individual hazard. We're going to go through all of this here coming up. So first I'm going to jump over to show you what the storm looks like on satellite from the perspective where we are here in southeast Louisiana. Very large uh, circulation with the storm. Um, you see that there is a lot of uh, blow up of thunderstorms or strong storms near the center of the circulation, which is an indication the storm is starting to strengthen or it will start to strengthen very soon. And if that's the case, that's what's forecast is the storm to regain hurricane strength here very shortly, uh, possibly even tonight, if not by early, um, likely by tonight, if not early tomorrow morning. And then it'll continue to turn a little bit more northwest to due north and head towards southeast Louisiana, where we are seeing a little bit higher confidence now that southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi will have impacts in some regard, moderate to potentially major, across the area. So we're going to go ahead and get started here and see if we can jump to the images. First and foremost, we want to kind of give people a perspective of who we are and where we're at. Uh, we are the National Weather Service New Orleans Baton Rouge office. You see there in that green color, that's the area we cover. It's very important that you know where you are in a, on a map. Uh, know the parish or county that you live in and know which office serves your area. If you have fr uh, friends and family or if you're listening to us from the Lake Charles area, which includes like Alexandria, Lafayette, or Lake Charles, National Weather Service Lake Charles covers your area. Feel free to uh, follow them on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, National Weather Service Jackson, Mississippi covers folks up to Jackson, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, further north. And then Mobile, if you have uh, friends or if you're listening from Mobile's area, that includes Pensacola, uh, Greater Mobile area. Uh, follow their office at NWS Mobile. Again, just wanted to actually show you that uh, we do have separate offices around the region that cover different specific areas. And we're going to be honing in mostly on our office here, National Weather Service New Orleans, as we're expecting a lot of impacts here coming up. So here's the latest uh, from the National Hurricane Center. This is the Intermediate Advisory as of 7 o'clock Central Daylight Time. As I just mentioned, maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour. Storm is moving northwest at 14 miles per hour, and it's starting to kind of, we'll see that little bit of a northwest to turn more towards a north-northwest probably later tonight and almost due north by uh, probably early tomorrow morning as we're getting that little bit of a turn with time. We see there's a lot of warnings in effect for our area too. We're going to mention and talk about each specific one of those warnings that are in effect too here in just a quick moment. So this is the current track. We're seeing that now the storm's getting closer. We'll talk, we're talking now less than 24 hours now until we're seeing some of the impacts across the area. That cone's getting shorter and shorter due to confidence increasing more and more. So now the impacts across southeast Louisiana is looking very likely and across coastal Mississippi as well. And for even friends and family all the way up through uh, Alabama, then getting up to even the Tennessee, uh, what's left of the system will be rolling through that area, possibly getting through Birmingham, maybe even uh, early Thursday morning where there could be some high winds in that area as well. So let's go over each specific threat one at a time. First we're going to take is going to be the winds. We do have tropical storm and hurricane warnings in effect. I know these colors are a little bit hard to de uh, uh, determine the difference between uh, the darker colors, the maroons you see there, those are the tropical storm warnings. Just find your county or parish where you live in and you'll be able to find which threat is in effect for your area. 
The brighter reds are the hurricane warnings. So hurricane warnings, of course, we're going to go through exactly what that means. If you're in a hurricane warning, we're going to be seeing hurricane conditions possible. That means sustained winds near or at hurricane force uh, possible with possibly even higher gusts in the warning area. Tropical storm, you can still have some big impacts in that area. It doesn't have to be a hurricane for it to be a big impact for your area as well. So keep that in uh, keep that in mind. Um, the difference, like we talk, uh, the difference between a warning and a watch. You see, yesterday we we're talking watches. Today we're talking warnings. That's because you see the window for these higher winds are getting shorter and shorter. That's within the next 36 hours as a warning, but we're well within that now. Within 24 hours of hurricane force conditions, possibly even less than 24 hours for some areas, especially across the coastal locations of southeast Louisiana, and we have no hurricane watches. Basically, if I go back here, no watches. In our area, there are some watches back towards our west for effects over towards Lafayette's area, just south of that, in Vermilion Bay, but not for our area. We're all in the warning phase right now, which means we're talking about maybe uh, 24, uh, possibly even less, maybe uh, uh, 20 to 24 hours in advance here before we start seeing impacts. So moving along, we wanted to kind of show a couple of new graphics here because we want people to kind of get a better idea of what they can expect. This is the probability, so between a 0 to 100% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds for your point location. Uh, we see that the greater risk is going to be near the center and just to the uh, east, so that's where we have the higher probabilities. That is this basically is showing you this is the chance of seeing sustained winds of 39 miles per hour or greater from trop tropical storm Zeta, which could be Hurricane Zeta by this time. Um, be aware that uh, tropical storm force winds are most likely to reach the southeast Louisiana coast by midday tomorrow. What we're saying is that the earliest reasonable time is going to be between 8 a.m. to the south. That's the 8 a.m. around the coastal areas to noon on the northern areas. That's the earliest reasonable. The most likely is going to be between noon on the southern areas to around 4 o'clock for the northern areas. So generally speaking, uh, we want people to really have their preparations done before the earliest reasonable, which is going to be between 8 a.m. and noon. So hopefully a lot of people, if you got your plan in place, we've been advertising this for many days. Make sure you got a good plan. It's early. Just get it done tonight. Uh, just make sure you got in case you lose power. We're talking about anywhere you see those higher probabilities. That's a higher chance that you're going to see those strong winds of 39 miles per hour or more. And if you're susceptible to seeing some power outages or power drops in those areas, or if you're around areas where trees fall, you lose power typically, be aware that this is, if you're in that zone, that includes Gulfport, Boothville, even New Orleans, uh, Homa, uh, even kind of a little bit less, but still includes Covington up there, Poplarville. For those areas, still have a plan in place in, play, in, in case you're going to be losing power in those regions. So again, uh, earliest reasonable, 8 a.m. to noon tomorrow, most likely noon to four o'clock in that re so what we're going to be seeing is tomorrow that the conditions will continue to deteriorate through the day we'll probably have some ra bands of heavy rain to start the day tomorrow and it'll just be a muggy windy rainy day to start the morning and then winds will pick up through the rest of the day uh and again uh around noon to four o'clock is going to be the most likely time we're going to see conditions really deteriorate as it goes down i wanted to show you this too this is our wind threat potential from zeta uh, this is kind of depicts similarly what I just showed with the probabilistic graphic to now uh, kind of a threat level. And you see that the yellow areas is more like 39 to 57, so medium, uh, low end to medium tropical storm. Then we're talking maybe a, a strong tropical storm in the orange areas. Uh, this, and then we're talking hurricane force in the red areas. So find your location, find your city, find your parish, find your county, and you'll know what threat level that you're looking at anywhere in these colors. Uh, you have the potential for seeing maybe uh, uh, some isolated power outages in the yellow. Orange and reds, though, that's where we're going to see a little bit of the greater impacts around there. That could be isolated to scattered power outages, some damage to trees. We could have some trees falling across the area, uh, and maybe even some damage to structures, especially uh, weak dwellings across the air, uh, areas there, and especially in those red areas. That's going to be south of New Orleans, Homa, Boothville, that area. Uh, south of New Orleans, south of Homa, and more including Boothville in that area. That's where we're going to see some of the highest winds. Now, I know a lot of uh, where we just talked about the earliest and the most likely. If, we're, if I can give you a good estimate on the peak highest wind, so even to narrow that, that down even more, we're talking maybe between 3 o'clock and 9, 3 o'clock afternoon tomorrow, between 9 p.m. and the evening tomorrow for southeast Louisiana, including New Orleans and all parts of Louisiana to now 6 p.m. to midnight for coastal Mississippi is going to be the worst winds for like Gulfport, Biloxi, and Pascagoula. 
So between 3 and 9 for the peak for southeast Louisiana, 6 and midnight for south Mississippi. That's going to be the peak worst conditions, but we want people to have preparations done well ahead of that. Uh, don't waste, wait till the last second. Be aware that this could uh, actually uh, create some very damaging winds across the area. We are concerned about that. The storm's going to be moving very fast, and it's going to de develop quite the wallop across the area. There's, it's going to, with the center so close to New Orleans, uh, it, it could impact New Orleans. If you live in the city and typically lose power, be aware that this could be one of those cases that that could happen. Uh, Covington, North Shore, Slidell, Mandeville, uh, Madisonville, uh, even towards Hammond, you have that chance to have seen some isolated to scattered power outages based out of this color scale we have, and definitely across Gulfport, Poplarville, uh, Bay St. Louis, as I just said, uh, Biloxi and Pascagoula, you have the risk of seeing some isolated power outages, isolated to scattered power outages in those areas. So we see that the risk is slightly less when we go to Baton Rouge and further to the west because the storm is going to be a little bit further away. You'll still see some high winds during the day. Baton Rouge, maybe you'll see winds fi uh, 15 to 25, maybe an occasional gust up to maybe 30 to 40 miles per hour. But really, generally speaking, the higher wind potential is going to be generally along and east of I-55 and then south of I-10 as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of we're kind of getting more of a narrowed down image of where we're expecting to see the highest wind gust potential. And in those areas is where we're concerned about power outages, damage to trees, and even maybe some minor structural damage. So I have there, uh, all preparations should be completed before Wednesday. Just do them tonight. Uh, walk around. If you haven't done it already, it doesn't take long. Just walk around your house, check to, or wherever you live. Check to see if you have anything loose that you can put inside or tie up. This will come through, and this thing's going to be moving fast. So we'll just see. Uh, it, think of this as just a quick high wind event, and it'll move through. But we want you to be as safe as possible. We don't want you out driving in it. We want you to be, as, uh, be safe, maybe just hunker down a little bit. Be aware there could be some power outages, and then we'll get the storm out of the way. Storm surge, that's another problem we, hear, we are a little bit concerned about. Uh, we do have storm surge warnings uh, that remain in effect for the same areas we've had watches. Now we have a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit higher values than we saw yesterday. Remember when we were talking yesterday, we were saying that some of the values, especially across coastal Mississippi, could come up, and they did. Uh, we sent a four to six. Now we're talking five to eight for the Mississippi coast. This is peak inundation values likely going to be more than likely going to be during the high tide values tomorrow is where they're really going to pull in very fast. Uh, four to six Port Fouchon and the Pearl River, including Lake Bourne. And uh, let's see here. I actually have the drawing of this. This will be a little bit better uh, uh, illustration what I'm talking about of some of the inundation values. There's your five to eight from the mouth, mouth of the Pearl to Dolphin Island. Uh, two to four, Lake Pontchartrain. That's going to be generally the north and northwest part of Lake Pontchartrain. More like one to three for the south part of the south shore. Uh, two to four, west of Port Fouchon. Four to six, east of Port Fouchon, going around the mouth of the Mississippi into Lake Bourne. We know that there's going to be also some storm surge issues well to the east. Uh, even if you have family, friends, or anyone listening in Gulf Shores, going to Pensacola, Navarre Beach, Panama City Beach, all has the chance of seeing some inundation there as well. Now, it'll be relatively minor, especially from in the Florida Panhandle area, but still could lead to some uh, impacts. Storm surge can be deadly. Um, enough said. Uh, they can be very deadly if you happen to live in an area that is susceptible to storm surge. And uh, uh, just make sure you have a plan to get out. Uh, it makes sure you have a, a way to get to higher ground. We don't have any evacuations orders in effect right now, but when they become uh, in effect, make sure you listen to local officials, uh, find the parish or county that you live in and follow them. Uh, most of these parish and counties have an app that you can uh, download or a website or follow them on social media where you can get this information or uh, listen to local broadcast meteorologists. Uh, all local broadcast Mets across the area are doing a fantastic job keeping everyone up to date as well. Uh, they'll pass along these news, these uh, local news uh, outlets. They will pass along the latest uh, uh, evacuations, mandatory, voluntary, whenever they come across. Just stay weather ready. Stay uh, vigilant to some potential changes. I know yesterday we we're talking about potential changes, and we're not going to be talking about those changes as much today due to increasing confidence. So again, if you live in that area, just be aware of it and make sure you have a, a reliable way to get out if need be. Heavy rain. We do have a flash flood watch now in effect, different from yesterday, which is in effect for parts of the North Shore and South Shore around Pontchartrain, Lake Pontchartrain, parts of Southeast Louisiana, south of New Orleans, including New Orleans, and coastal and southern Mississippi. Uh, this is where we're talking now that the rain totals has come down a little bit, but we don't want people to pay too much attention to that because we still are worried about locally higher amounts. 
Widespread totals around two to four inches, locally higher could be very possible, especially if we see any banding features setting up with the system, which is very likely in this case, given that the trajectory of the approach of the storm, we could get some very heavy rain bands set up across the Mississippi coastline. If that's the case, we can see a lot higher than four inches of rain there. And if you are uh, live in a location that typically sees flooding due to rainfall of around two to four inches, be aware that this could cause a problem for you. Just make sure that uh, you have a, a, a safe place to go if you need to get away. Or, uh, and of course, we're saying if any barricades or roads become closed due to flooding waters, as we always say, uh, turn around, don't drown when encountering flooded roadways. Here's what I was just mentioning before about the generally two to four inches, but we see that there could be some, I see popular villas at four to six. Uh, what we're worried about here is going to be the locally higher amounts, a lot like I was just talking about. And we notice too that Baton Rouge has come down. And this is what we talk about when we get closer to the storm, we start to see that gradient get finer and finer between the higher rainfall totals to the east and lower rainfall totals to the west. So Baton Rouge, your rainfall totals are coming down, although the rainfall totals to the east it still remains about the same, if not around the same as what we've been talking about this whole time, because we are experiencing the potential for around four to six inches in that area. Baton Rouge, you will see some heavy rain bands tomorrow, but as the storm gets closer to your area, there's going to be a very fine gradient between the storm's center and to the west, and you really won't see in, uh, significant impacts in that area. Just a nice little soaking rain for that area there. So again, but New Orleans, uh, Covington, Mandeville, Slidell, Biloxi, Gulfport, Pascagoula, if I'm naming your city, you're in that uh, flash flood watch, which means you have the risk of seeing some flooding rains. As we say, uh, it does not, and this is a perfect example to show you this graphic, it does not take a major hurricane to cause major impacts. Even relatively weak tropical systems can produce uh, a lot of rainfall that can lead to flooding uh, even away from the coastline. We see there's a potential for storm surge, but don't think, oh, well, I'm not far, I'm not close to this coastline, I'm not going to see flooding. Well, that's not true at all. We can get flooding from heavy rainfall. If you live in a low-lying area, uh, you could see some flooding issues there. So just make sure you know where you're at. Uh, if uh, you live in a flood area, make sure you have a plan to get out if need be. Uh, and just be aware that this could be a case where we need to kind of watch for this. Even isolated tornadoes are a possibility. We now, from yesterday, uh, we uh, had a marginal risk. Now today we're talking a slight risk. So on a one through five scale, instead of a one, to a f one out of five, now we're talking a two out of five risk in that yellow color that you see there. That's for the potential for a few isolated tornadoes. That's going to be primarily for Boothville, including uh, up to Biloxi and Pascagoula. Slightly less risk for Slidell, New Orleans, but, are, but it's te technically non-zero. Basically, if you see anywhere in that dark green or yellow colors, you have the risk of seeing a quick spin-up, weak or brief isolated tornado. Even some water spouts that could be coming on shore uh, could be also a, a potential here. We were just talking about those heavy rain bands that could be possible across coastal Mississippi. Anywhere in those bands, we can get that quick spin up. So the most important thing here is make sure you have a reliable way to receive warnings. If you receive them over your phone, they'll alert through what's called a wireless emergency alert or WIA. Or listen to local broadcast meteorologists. They'll come in on TV if, uh, if there's a warning in effect for your area. Just know that these are going to be quick, fast-moving tornadoes. These aren't going to be large, violent tornadoes, but they are still equally just as dangerous and can, be in, uh, and can cause injury, a serious injury, or even sometimes death. So if you're under tornado warning, make sure you treat it just as equally as like it's any other tornado warning. Don't try, treat this like it's just a quick little tornado. It's not going to do anything. We've seen very strong, we've seen strong tornadoes and even some uh, damaging, very bad damaging tornadoes in these type of tropical rain bands. So treat them just as serious as you would any other day. Nowhere to go when you get this warning. Lowest floor near the center away from windows. Uh, just always remember that and you'll be safe. Just know what to do. Be aware that these could be rain wrapped as well. Uh, you may not see them coming. So when you get that, if you hear that alert, if the broadcast met comes in and tells you there's a warning or it goes off on your phone, just do exactly what I just said there. Lowest floor near the center away from windows. Just hang out there for a little bit. Let the storm pass. The warning will be expired or canceled by that point, and then you can go about your day of hopefully staying indoors during this type of an event. So here's the key takeaways I was just talking about. I'm not going to read through every single one of these, but if you want to view through each one of them, you can. Strong winds, storm surge, heavy rain leading to flash flooding, isolated tornadoes, and even some marine hazards will all be possible from Tropical Storm Zeta as it makes landfall tomorrow. Again, when we're talking about the timeline, it's going to be the uh, around 8 a.m. to noon for the earliest reasonable to noon to 4 o'clock for the most likely. Generally speaking, that's something that's going to be deteriorating conditions with time tomorrow. 
will have several heavy bands of rain. Some of them may have some isolated tornadoes with them, and some of them may be dropping some isolated flash flooding. So generally speaking, just all day tomorrow, it's just going to be a, a bad weather day. Uh, it's going to be some high winds and heavy rain, and just kind of prepare for that. If there's any good news about this, and we'll show you that here in just a second, this storm is going to get out of here, and boy, it's going to get out of here fast. It's going to pick up speed when it comes through here, so even by early Thursday morning, we're talking maybe daybreak, the system will be fast out of here, which is fantastic news. We don't want this storm to stick around. We want this thing out of here. Um, and then I want to show you this too here. I see that we've been posting uh, where to uh, access our webpage for tropical weather impacts. If you can't or don't know how to uh, see this information, I mean, everything I'm showing you, you can actually access yourself. Uh, we see we've been posting this link, but this is exactly what it looks like here. You just go to our webpage and you go under forecast and find tropical. And then it'll take you to a page that shows you everything. All these graphics I just created, all of these are actually located here and will update. Uh, satellite radar, uh, our social media, what we're posting a lot. So be sure to visit us there uh, on this webpage, and we'll give you the latest updates uh, for when it comes across. So we're going to kind of jump back here real quick and just make sure that I caught everything I meant to talk about, and it looks like I did. I just want to mention one real quick right before we go, um, just to talk about, again, everyone's been talking a lot about the timing. Uh, just know that we're saying anywhere between 8 a.m. to noon for the earliest to noon to 4 o'clock for the most likely. Uh, be aware that as the areas that I just showed you before with the brighter colors, that's going to be the areas most likely to see some damaging wind potential. Uh, and the good news, like I said before, is this storm's going to be out of here. And that reminds me of something I was just about to show you here. Um, what's the weather forecast beyond this? If people are actually thinking about Halloween uh, down the line, uh, it's a good time to think. I mean, here coming up, once the storm gets out of here, it's really going to look pretty nice. So this is kind of like a future forecast of the United States. Uh, going out through future here and as we get towards early Thursday this is Thursday morning when I was just talking about we see that the storm system by early Thursday morning so that's 7 a.m. Thursday the center of the storm is actually near Chattanooga Tennessee which is incredible that had the speed of the system and you see there's going to be a strong cold front sweeping across the area and when it does a lot of this dry air is going to come in back behind it we're going to clear out and by even yeah especially during the day on Thursday it's going to be very nice and we're, we're promising a very nice Halloween across the area across our area, which is uh, great news and well-deserved that we get a little bit of a break from some of this active uh, tropical weather that we've been seeing. So maybe a little bit of uh, some um, uh, light at the end of the tunnel, as we've been trying to say here, that, you know, let's just get the storm out of here. We got one bad weather day, day tomorrow, and then we see we're going to have a lot nicer weather coming up. So we're going to uh, pretty much end it there. I think we covered pretty much all the primary risks that we expect from the system. We're going to be doing another Facebook Live likely later tonight. So as promised uh, the past few days, as the storm gets closer, we're going to be shooting these Facebook Lives out faster and faster to give you the latest updates and make sure that everyone knows what to do to best prepare for the storm. So we're going to end it there. Um, and like I say, we'll be uh, meeting you back either later tonight and for, uh, for sure multiple times tomorrow. Uh, and we will continue to do these updates. So uh, we hope everyone um, stays safe here uh, with the storm coming up tomorrow and hopefully you get your preparations done ahead of time. So we'll meet with you back later. Y'all take care.